Hope you love pets, or at least pet related objects. Because if you don't, that's awkward. Because we're here to talk about 10 of the best objects from the Cats and Dogs expansion pack. As always, we'll look at 5 standout and 5 underused objects from the pack. Also, the objects mentioned here are just my opinion, so if I don't mention one that you yourself love, then please feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Let's kick things off now with the standout being the robot vacuums, because we don't have time to clean the floor ourselves. No we do not. Now there are two vacuums that come with the pack, and the difference between the cheaper and more expensive vacuums is that the more expensive ones come with a few upgrades already installed. This includes waterproof mechanisms, which will mean that your robot can clean up liquid, the gyro compactor upgrade, which will mean that your robot can hold more trash, and the gizmo redundancy upgrade, which will see your vacuum break less. There's also a small cosmetic difference too. No matter which robot vacuum you get, I recommend upgrading it fully. Note that the Nanotech Diagnostics upgrade which fully prevents a robot vacuum from breaking can only be performed after the gizmo redundancy upgrade is complete. There's also a turbocharge upgrade which will make the robot faster, and the sonic dampeners upgrade will reduce noise and make the vacuum less appealing for pets. Not going to lie though, I love it when cats ride on the vacuum, so I would say this upgrade is optional. There really is no bigger endorphin rush than a virtual cat riding on a virtual vacuum, I promise you. Okay, I might not promise that. Also, don't forget to upgrade the robot vacuum's docking station, which is separate. I know, it's so sneaky. You wouldn't even think it was a thing. The micro incinerator upgrade removes trash from the vacuum while it's docked, meaning you don't have to empty it. And the synchronized core chronometer will mean docked vacuums can automatically clean more frequently. Also note that I only recommend using a fully upgraded robot vacuum cleaner. While a fully upgraded robot vacuum cleaner is super useful and will promote good house vibes and mean your sims rarely have to clean, a robot vacuum that hasn't been upgraded is going to break all the time and overall just cause a lot of problems that your hot self doesn't have time for. You're going to stare at it and wonder, why are you so useless? So definitely use an upgraded vacuum all the way. Also, keep in mind that while vacuums can be useful and used in any home, these vacuums are particularly handy in messy environments such as if you're running a vet clinic. Alrighty, we're moving on to an underused object now, being the Sum of All Birds statue. This is a gorgeous statue that is purely cosmetic, but it does give a plus 7 environment boost. Now you might not have even known that it exists because it's obtained in a rather interesting way. The Cats and Dogs expansion pack brings with it the feather collection, and you can get feathers by having your cat chase down birds. Simply find a little flock or a group of birds, and command your cat to chase them. While thankfully no virtual birds will be harmed, the birds will then drop a pile of feathers which your cat will then bring back to you. Each pile has 3 random feathers from the collection, and there are 12 feathers in total that you'll want to grab. While you can display feathers on a wall, which looks fabulous, you can also combine one of each feather in the collection to make the sum of all birds statue. It can make for a gorgeous structure for your home, and can fit in particularly well in a study. On to the third object now, which is a standout, and it's the veterinary exam or get better tables. I love these, and they can be used to treat almost any illness that your cats and dogs might come down with. Often I'll buy one and have my sim use it to treat their pets, simply to save them from travelling to the vet and all of the loading screens that comes with that. Exam tables will also be used lots if you buy and run your own vet, meaning that it can make a great business investment allowing you to make money as you treat all sorts of pets and raise your veterinarian skill. Running a vet can be so much fun, and these are must-have objects for examining and treating pets. Next up is a quick underused object being the catnip herb packets. These cost just 25 simoleons and can be bought in buy mode or on a computer. Each contains a nuzzle nip, a catnip, a nap nip, and a mad nip. You can grow these in your garden if you'd like to have easy access to more or to sell nips you grow for some money. But most importantly, you can use these plants to influence your cats and their mood. Catnip will make your cats more energized, while napnip will make them sleepier. Madnip, as you might have guessed, will make your cat super angry, 
while nuzzle nip will make them very flirty. Overall, they can just be a bit of fun to make use of. We're going to keep going now and look at the fifth object which is a standout, being the Serger Omatic Pet Surgery Station. Much like the veterinary exam stations, you can use these to treat sick pets running a series of scans on them to find their illness. These scans will cost a few simoleons, but will often uncover a lot of a pet's symptoms and their illness very quickly. While the exam station will generally be your first point of call, you'll run into a few instances where you'll need the pet surgery station to treat a sick pet, so it's a good idea to have one handy when running a vet clinic. Surgery stations also have another purpose, being that they can be used to de-sex cats and dogs. If you have a pet that you don't want to see start a family, then this can be a good feature to make use of. That being said, who doesn't love puppies and kittens, so we probably won't be using it all that much. Also, just know that this can be reversed. Also, at level 9 handiness, you can upgrade this machine so that it never breaks. Next up, we're looking at the obstacle course objects, which I believe to be underused. If you place a range of these near each other, then they'll form a complete course. While you can command a pet to use objects solo, you can also choose to run an obstacle course with them. This will see the obstacles light up blue, and once a pet has cleared or attempted to clear it, it'll turn green. The amount of faults that your pet commits will be tallied, and at the end your pet will be told the time it took. While your sim runs an obstacle course with their pet, their pet training skill will increase, and overall I just think this is a super fun way to engage with your pets. It can tie in really nicely with storytelling if you wanted to make a show dog of sorts, and it's also an awesome activity to include in parks or pet friendly spaces. Plus, the fact that you can make obstacle courses different shapes and sizes can mean that it can be a small compact course or something much larger. As a quick side note before we move on, rings can be set on fire, because who doesn't love it when your pet jumps through flaming hoops? So extra, we love it. Moving on to a quick standout being the Litter Laser Self-Cleaning Litter Box. Honestly, none of us like cleaning up pets poo, and I'm sure that our sims are no exception. Well, unless you have some very strange sims, which I'm sure that we all do. Anyway, for most of our sims, they're going to love that this litter box takes care of itself and means that your cat's business is none of your business, as it'll be lasered away. It's a big mood. Number 8 is a quick, underused object being the stalls that come with the pack. There are three of these, and one is a general pet store that sells pet food and a few unique pet toys that can't be bought in buy mode, such as the give a dog a bone and the hamburger ball that you can use to play fetch with your pets. You can also buy food and drink for your sim here too. The shrimp stall also sells pet related seafood and more exclusive balls, being the clam it up and the it's so fluffy ball. It also sells some seafood dishes for your own sims to try. The final stall is a fish stall that you can buy raw fish from. These will come out excellent quality, so while you can cook with them, you can even stock them in your fish tanks. In particular, this stall combined with the shrimp stall could be used to create a cute pet friendly fish market. While you can find these stalls around Brindleton Bay, you can also buy them in buy mode and pop them in community lots or on your own home lot. Once placed, simply hire a vendor to run them before buying whatever you want. One final thing to keep in mind is that eating some of the unique foods from the stalls will unlock that food for you to make at home yourself too. The ninth object is a standout and it's the Medicine Crafters. Using these will train up the veterinarian skill and they can be used to make things that will help you when treating pets on exam tables or on the surgery stations. Most importantly though is that they can be used to make treats for your pets which can then have some really awesome effects on your cats and dogs, from boosting wellness, to making them smell, to changing their temperature, and much more. Also, don't ask me why making your pet smell is an awesome effect, because I really don't have an answer for you. A highlight though is the Poop Randomizer Treat, which can make your pet poo out either rainbow or golden poo. And if they do the latter, then sometimes they can even let loose a golden bar worth just over 6,000 simoleons. Note that if you're going for this, then it's easier to get the golden bars from dogs rather than cats who will often go to the toilet in the litter box. Another highlight is the age up and age down treats, which do exactly what their name suggests. At higher veterinarian skill levels, more treats will become available to make. 
and at level 10 you can even create an ambrosia treat which you can use to bring ghost pets back to life. It's time for the final object now which is underused and it's the medical vending machines. These can be used to store treats that you hold and if you're running a vet clinic then you'll have to stock the vending machines with treats that you've made. It can be great for making a bit of money on the side. Also weirdly if I stock the vending machine with just one of a treat I could send one of my other sims from a different household over and they could buy as many of that treat as they wanted without the stock running out. This being said, if your sim visits a vet clinic that is not owned by another sim, then every treat will automatically be purchasable from the get-go. These can just help bring to life your vet clinic a little more and of course provide you with an easy way to obtain treats for if your sim doesn't have the veterinary skill to make them. And with that, we've reached the end. That's 10 objects that you need to start using from the Cats and Dogs expansion pack. If there are any objects that you yourself love to make use of that I haven't mentioned, then please feel free to let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed or found this helpful, then please subscribe and leave a like. I would really appreciate it and have an amazing day. See you later.